Thanks, David. It's always great to, uh, to see you. Mark Hatch, the founder uh, of uh, Tech Shop and former CEO, general partner of Network Society Ventures, um, uh, one of the most important minds behind the maker movement, the author of the Maker Movement Manifesto, and now just uh, recently released uh, your new book, The Maker Revolution. Right. Yep. But you are not stopping there. Right. And uh, you are here so that we can talk about what does it mean to bring the maker movement to the next stage right. of a decentralized global business model? So my biggest frustration at the moment is that we don't have tens of thousands of maker spaces built out around the globe. Um, it's clear that the economic advantages are there, that the educational attainment advantages are there, that it's ways for helping to uh, improve uh, justice and, and actually and help corporations do things better. Um, and in that regard, I'm focusing all of my attention on trying to figure out ways of accelerating it, which is why I, you know, I wrote the book and um, why I now work as a consultant. But I'm fascinated now um, with this uh, idea of trying to tokenize different segments of the maker movement itself um, as a way of aligning the benefits and incentives so that we can, in fact, accelerate the pace of the development of the movement. Many of us are very excited about the blockchain and uh, all the innovation and yeah. the thinking that goes into how uh, to rethink uh, uh, organizations, business models, uh, how uh, we can create algorithms that create the right types of uh, incentives uh, economically, algorithmically. Yeah. Uh, and so you are uh, designing uh, a maker token or a series of maker Correct. tokens. What are some of the roles that these will sure. potentially And have? we're not entirely sure exactly what it is we're going to launch um, first, uh, but there are some very clear kind of early indicators. Um, the first one is that uh, these maker spaces really require kind of public-private uh, partnerships and the funding streams that uh, maker spaces have are very, very critical. Um, and then communicating what the maker space and what that value is to people in the community is, is an important component. So I can easily envision a, a maker token that um, kids get excited about and go to their parents and say, you know, we should use this token when we buy these kinds of things from these types of folks. And a portion of that then actually goes to the maker space that the child is associated with. And I think that has some nice exponential potential impact where you, you, know, you roll through one district after another. And so I think it's important, you know, how are we going to be funding the maker spaces and then who's capturing the value? Um, and it would be nice if the kids could actually help create that value and, um, and maybe even capture some of it themselves. Also, there's um, kind of the educators and, and badging. Um, it's, it's clear that we need some way of creating um, transportable knowledge that can move from one space to another, but that's certified, that's qualified, um, and that means something. And I think we can create an ecosystem where you know, people are paid in tokens and, and people create content in exchange for tokens, and we can tokenize that entire um, piece of it. And of course, a little further out, I mean, it, it's possible that you know, maybe we could even tokenize the machines uh, themselves. I am particularly fascinated by this. Uh, uh, some of the work that I've done in the past is around the Internet of Things. A and I actually believe that uh, a, a lot of uh, exciting development around the blockchain is going to be about a capacity of machine-to-machine -machine communications yeah. as the appropriate resources are allocated. And, and uh, I've uh, had the chance to visit uh, in the past uh, a tech shop where uh, the uh, capacity of monitoring uh, the performance of the, the machines, right, right. who does what, uh, using what machine, uh, really raises uh, the, the, the bar with respect of a previous era Absolutely. where you would just have them yeah. laying around without any awareness of uh, their own right. level of usage. And so being able to aggregate and communicate this both within uh, a single makerspace as well as across, across various right. uh, makerspaces can yeah. be very valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it might be a way of getting them funded as well. I mean, somebody may um, invest in a machine, de deploy it, have it tokenized, and then receive mm -hmm. a revenue stream off mm -hmm. the back end. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, they may or may not make money on it long term, but it would be a way of defraying uh, makerspace uh, mm -hmm. costs. 
So uh, at the time of this recording, uh, the uh, blockchain industry and uh, the, the token launches, uh, so-called ICOs, initial coin right. offerings, yeah. are all of the rage uh, with all kinds of regulatory uh, adaptations and upheavals that are happening almost on a daily basis. And uh, whenever this recording is going to be uh, viewed, we will see uh, what uh, the stage of the industry is going to be at the time. Um, now, I am sure that uh, you will be able to address uh, the challenges that you will see sure. uh, uh, along the line and that uh, uh, you, you will be able to, to overcome them. What is your ideal expectation? What is the uh, outcome that you really see in two, five, ten years uh, down the road? Well, I, you know, I could see a couple of different tokens, but fundamentally what they should do is to help spread the benefits and encourage the development of the maker movement itself. Um, whether it's the operating system that runs the spaces, whether it's the spaces themselves, whether it's the education component uh, within it, or the folks that are creating content. I could also see it going to manufacturing. If you're, you know, if you've take, come out of a makerspace and you decide to launch something on a, on an Etsy or you do your Kickstarter campaign, uh, you might decide to to use the token as a as a method for helping people in your community to capture some component of the benefit. There are a lot of partnership opportunities, and uh, sometimes uh, I see people at conferences who say, "Oh, we are really overlapping with that, or we are competitors with that other." And, and that is kind of a quaint uh, uh, vision when the upside of so much that needs to be done uh, dwarfs uh, whatever little overlap in the right. present uh, yeah. solutions there may be. Yeah, I know. Relative to tokens, I, I think you'll be carrying 30 tokens or more. You'll, sw you'll swap between them depending on what you're trying to do and, and where you, you want to see the, uh, the benefit. And, and, and the kind of inclusive vision and open access to the makerspaces right. that you mentioned uh, is, is similar to how Tesla uh, makes available their patents and, and intellectual right. property yeah. because they want to build an ecosystem. And, and, and your goal as well is to spread the benefits of uh, the, the maker movement across as many uh, industries and, and uh, segments yeah. of population hey, this and is just, countries. This is just across. one more tool in trying to advance the pace with which we're driving innovation. Um, you know, we still need the government to be involved. We still want educators to be involved. We still want corporations. This isn't mutually exclusive by, by any stretch. But if we can launch a successful token, I think we can actually help monetize and create a value stream um, that could, in fact, accelerate this pretty quickly. Thank you very much, and uh, good luck uh, with this new Thanks, initiative. Steve. Appreciate it.